Okay, this is another episode of By the Numbers, League of Legends edition. And as always, it's sponsored by Alpha Draft, which actually has had a facelift. Alpha Draft has had work done. It's looking good on the front end now. It's looking more professional. Do you think you'll ever have uh, some sort of plastic surgery if you're in the on-camera talent in about 20 years, Monty? Do you think you'd ever go for it? Uh, no, I definitely would not go for it. I'm really not into that. It's probably the one super Korean thing to do that I'm definitely not down with. I don't understand it, um, but okay. you know, I do appreciate that uh, Alpha Draft is actually showing off their more Korean side by getting extensive, extensive facial surgery, let's say, done. Because yeah. here's the thing. Actually, I mean, I don't know if he cares. Uh, he probably doesn't care if I say this on air, but actually Richard once told me when we were first like finding out about this Turner stuff, and obviously, you know, there's a chance maybe we will work with Turner. He was telling me like, oh, if I ever get into like like television money, I'm just going to literally get like hair implants and I'm going to get plastic surgery and get liposuction. And I, I was just like, I, at this point, I hope that happens. I just want to see what the <laughs> fuck he's going to look like. Like imagine if he just totally transformed his whole body. It'd be amazing, right? <laughs> I would actually love to see Richard Lewis with, yeah. uh, with liposuction done. That would and like a and like a thick hair implant, like full on, like like a fucking late night TV host or something. You know, It'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? It's time to go for it, right? Soon, yeah, yeah. perhaps he's got that also, opportunity. You know, the thing about plastic surgery as well is that I always have to explain this to Westerners about Korea. Is that when I tell them that so many people that have had plastic surgery, particularly obviously young girls, they'll always be like, oh, because they think it's like bad, but they don't realize, no, no, actually most of those people look a lot better because they've had the plastic surgery. Like they don't realize it's not even, that's why the whole thing, if you could explain this point to them, they'd realize that it's not about League of Legends. Like it's not because of fucking something to do in League of Legends that Koreans are better at League of Legends. because they're Koreans, it really is. It's like the culture and the way their whole society is. So even in plastic surgery, they're better than fucking Hollywood where they actually are <laughs> giving plastic surgery to people who are going to go on fucking camera for like the rest of the whole time. They're not even as good as Koreans in plastic surgery. And I don't know why it is. It's, is it practice? Is it what? Whatever it is, they're better at that as well. It's true. They are really good at it. They're just good. They're just good at what they do. So on that note, Let's actually start with Koreans. We'll start with LCK. Oh, Damn, wait a second. Wait a right second. Since we're starting with LCK, let's not go straight to the actual <laughs> matchup, Monty. We have a section previously <laughs> called Monty's Braggart Corner. But this time, it's like if we had a graphic, Monty, if, we had a, if this was a Korean show, it'd be all produced through graphics and stuff. It, it would then be an episode where I'd crossed out like with a big red mark over the top of the graphic and it said Thorin's in like as though it was in handwriting, you know, like another way they would do some cheesy font like that. So this will be Thorin's Braggart's Corner. Now, if Sam can bring this up on stream, if you remember last week on the show, we had a bet where because I said to Monty that I think Jin Air will end up being better than Samsung and will place higher. We had a contest where we did a 1v1 ten dollar entry and we agreed that we would make up the teams he would make up his using the samsung players and i would make up mine using the gen air players and what's great is objectively <laughs> i was actually wrong like samsung actually <laughs> won the game and the series yet the, what's great is i think this is an excellent story about fantasy esports because you know that like, we always stress that fantasy esports is a counterintuitive realm where you can't think about who wins the game and how you have to think about who will get more kills and what the nature of the game will be because actually even though samsung won the series by picking the Jinair players i won the actual contest so why did i actually win the it. contest money what was the big difference between our rosters uh, here well first off even though even though Samsung did, like you said, win the series. So we had to we can only take three players from Samsung or Jin Air. You can't have more than three players from the same team on your roster, so we had to fill it out in other ways. So what I did was I took Wraith, who's had a very high KDA this season, alongside Core JJ slash Stitch, because they've had pentakills and gone off at times, and then the team Samsung Galaxy. You took the team Jin Air Green Wings, and then you decided to take Captain Jack and or uh, excuse me, Kuzan and Trace, right? So the main problem is that Kuzan and Trace both got 70 points in this best of three, whereas my Samsung players, Core JJ and Wraith, got 56 and 48 points respectively. But really, you picked very heavily around the Elbron Long Zhu uh, with Pure and Captain Jack and Chaser slash Crash. And so what I did was I picked around SK Telecom because they've actually been doing better in terms of points this season. I think the real problem for me is that Bang only had three kills, one death, and six assists in a best of three and gave me 35 points. So that was like a big issue, even though he has been one of the highest 
he has been like the highest kill total behind Kuro this season. So you, I think you uh, you did well in your other picks there. But and also, I, here's another example of where it's counterintuitive and why fantasy is actually fun in its own way because it's like its own game you have to learn. So on paper, Faker and Smeb are for, like perhaps the best players in the world at their positions. But the difference is, Kuzon and Trace, look at the amount of fucking assists they have. Yep. So there's more kills assist, for the other players on the other your side, but the amount of assists is unreal there. And assists 23 probably, assists for a top player. Yeah, assists are probably the best thing to have in Alpha Draft too. So that's assists are really, really, really valuable. So yeah, I mean, actually, that's one of the weird things about Alpha Draft as well that people don't think about is it actually solo kills aren't that valuable because you're actually better if your players get all their kills in a group and participate and then if you've got multiple players from the team you're getting assists from those kills and you actually rack up way more points than that like if you actually had the ultimate 1v1 player and he just solo killed and won and went like 6-0 that actually wouldn't be that great for fantasy points because you wouldn't get any of the extra bonus aspects basically so well i did it twice monty two times in the so I'll, last I'll time I'll get you someday. <laughs> Here's the key thing, though, Monty. It isn't as satisfying. Here's the thing. If Jin had won the series and had won, that wouldn't be as satisfying somehow as the fact that I get to win the money, but by them losing. That's yeah, and it's something the second special. time. It's the second time. Yeah, and that's also because I play... See, Monty, you remember, as we all know with my contests, it's not about winning. It's about swag. It's about how yeah. you win. You have to win in the most humiliating fashion and counterintuitive fashion for everyone. <laughs> yes, and that's, I mean, it's just been true of your entire career. Like, you've been failing upwards. You you make money by making the wrong decisions. It's actually incredible. Well, the How consistent you is, are. People always do comment on my League of Legends videos, the haters. Like, oh, he doesn't know anything about the, the League of Legends or the meta. It's like, mate, as long as that video hits 100k views, the money's real. That's <laughs> that. The money doesn't ask any questions of what I know about the method of League of Legends. It just pops into my pocket and then is used for goods and services and hose. Yeah. See, when those when those hundreds are raining down across the fat, gelatinous ass of a stripper, she doesn't care whether I know about League of Legends. That's how I crude the money. She just knows that's cash money. So if Alpha Draft wants to cut that into a commercial, they're welcome to <laughs> give them full likeness rights on all of this shit. I don't know, maybe they will one day. Now, in the world of Alpha Draft, we obviously have loads of contests to do. So, let me have a look. The only thing is, because LCK started today, we right. only have the one for tomorrow, obviously. That's right, because it's only two days this week. And for those of you wondering why I'm not casting champions, it's because I am not in Korea this week. So... <laughs> I will be back next week, but yeah, there are only there are only two game days because it's a Lunar New Year, Lunar New Year week. They took a lot of time off. Okay, so in terms of the actual games, they've KT obviously... versus SKT, which is very exciting, and CJ versus the Africa Freaks. Okay, is CJ bad enough that this could actually be a three-game series against Africa? Yes, I think it, it actually could be, because CJ has been looking better than expected, and the Africa Freaks have been looking worse, a little bit worse than expected. Um, but they've got, uh, the Africa Freaks actually have some players who, when they win games, get a lot of points. Like Song Yoon right now, for example, gets a ton of points when the Freaks actually win games. And the Freaks could win here. They might lose, but even if they lose, if they take it to three games, uh, they, I think... I think Song Yun will pick up quite a few points. So he's been really, really good uh, in terms of fantasy points, the highest when winning so far this season. So just based on that one, Song Yun might be a good flex pick, especially if they manage to pull out the win. Uh, beyond that, in like KT versus SKT, Faker has been getting a huge amount of points. He's way up there above 30 points on average a game. So that's, that's definitely another pick to look for uh, in this particular matchup. Obviously, this match, SKT-KT, could certainly go to three games. I mean, KT, yeah. admittedly, their records have been a bit easy because the only good team they've played, basically, is they played Rocks, and they did win a game in that that was competitive. But they haven't played SKT, which they're about to know. They haven't played Longju. They haven't played Jin S. They haven't actually played most of the top teams yet. But looking good in the other games. Meanwhile, SKT obviously struggling at times. So the question is... Do you put like all your big hitters from both teams? Would you do that? Would you pick no, like? No, 
I, Sunday I mean, and Faker. And well, the like, thing is, know. the thing is that for the most of the season, SKT actually has been putting up a lot of fantasy points, which has been different than last year, and especially Bang because they've been building compositions. But last week they played a very low kill series, which is part yeah. of what sunk me against you. So I actually knew that they would do that, so I kind of baited you into that. You know, I understood that the way that they would play differently, and so you know, I mean. Some of, I don't just look at the numbers money and go by that. You know, I, I have like intuitive powers as well. So no, it's just bad luck for you actually. Yeah, it's true. They did just play like, <laughs> we will just win the game in the lowest fantasy points winning. <laughs> which is, which is good. Which is good for League of Legends. But, Straight you know. League of Legends, yeah. <laughs> it's terrible see, fantasy see, League of Legends. That's, that's, how, that's how I justify this to myself, Thorin, because yeah. if it's a good game, I get the, the enjoyment and pleasure out of simply just okay. watching and enjoying right. the game. And if I pick those players... Uh, that means that I, I win either way, right? I win the pleasurable route or I, uh, I see, I see the, the total in my bank account increase just a little bit by, you know, suffering perhaps through the game. But uh, there are enjoyable consequences afterwards regardless. Well, here's the thing, Monty. As the American, African-American philosopher Jay-Z said on the uh, collaborative album with Kanye West, Watch the Throne, he said, moral victories are only for little league coaches. So you know what, Monty? Much like the name of that album, Watch the Throne, mate, because I've got it at the moment. I've won two of these things in a row. You got, you basically, you have to reverse sweep at this point to even get in the lead. Like, you have to win three in a row now. All right. But we'll, well, we'll find opportunities to do that. So, okay, in, in terms of this uh, play day then. So, yeah, yeah. So basically, Who is like, the steal here then? Who do you think is the best value? Because obviously there's not that many players. So it, this is one where it's like really going to come down to the small details as to whether you win the contest. Well, here's the thing that's interesting um, is that right now Sangyun and Kramer, even though they're playing each other and even though they are the highest two point total players when it comes to points in victory, because Kramer has been being pretty heavily built around by CJ and when he, pretty much CJ needs him to go off to win and the same is kind of true of Sanyun that since these guys are playing each other you could technically get both of them and if this goes to three games like you're likely to get a, just an insane amount of points so both of the 80 carries in the CJ Africa Freaks game are going to be super valuable um, you may just pick one and see if you think that team is going to win I might so, like tip it a little bit to CJ at this point because they have better shot calling in the late game. So at the bottom, and two of the cheapest players, Snowflower and Ixu, are like under seven thousand, and they both have around eleven fantasy points per game. If you're going to fill out a roster, would either of these two be worthwhile? Uh, well, the thing is that you can see the the average fantasy points per game now column, uh, but it's it's about. One of the most important statistics is not the average points per game, but the average points when they win. Okay. Um, because it's who you think is going to win. Because CJ and, and Africa, obviously, they have losing records. So w the average points are going to be significantly lower than, than the points when they win. And somebody has to win here. So that's like kind of the more important statistic to look at. Ixu is actually pretty low for, for a top laner. Um, he's got under 20 even in a victory for Africa. So I don't know if you go directly with him. That's that may not be the best plan. Um, I think I'd rather, if I had to spend money, I'd rather like take someday or Duke or something like that from the other series. Like Who is someday, actually going to win the series? You think KT will probably win, but we'll okay. see. So should you pick them as your team as well? I, I well, if you can if you can go that high, I think the CJ series might be sloppier. I might take CJ as my team because I think they're going to win, but they've been having very long average game times and having to take a lot of objectives in order to secure that victory. So uh, that's I think that might be a little bit better. Uh, Snowflower has actually been doing pretty well for a support when winning. Nearly twenty five points a game for a support is is okay. pretty high. Actually. That's pretty good so, considering our cheapness. Yeah. Maybe to yeah, Snowflower time. Snowflower might be some some really good value there that you now that you asked for okay. sure. Right, so, I mean, this contest starts in four hours, 40 minutes, so people, only people who watch it live can do this, but the EU LCS one, we'll have a look at now. So this one has Origin versus Vitality. Now, that whole thing, Monty, about how, oh, don't worry, no one's worried about Origin, they're just, like, you know, they're warming up, they're getting into the event, then they fired their coach. So I get the feeling, Monty, people are a little bit worried about that. Meanwhile, Vitality <laughs> look pretty good, so... What do you think happens in this one? Ooh, this one's hard. Um, I think this is the week, by the way, where almost every matchup is really hard, actually. 
the nice thing, so in spite of all the problems that Origin have, ha have having, they still have Sven, who is one of the highest fantasy point players when winning games at over 30 in the EULCS. So if Origin wins, then he can definitely, he can definitely like put up some pretty good numbers. So that's, that's something to consider, uh, at least from the AD carry position. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty good. And then we've also got. I, I guess you're gonna pick Vitality to win the game, right? I don't know. It's so it's so hard. I would not go after Power of Evil, even if you think that Origin's going to win because he hasn't had that many. He doesn't actually make that many fantasy points for his team, and Vitality as a whole. Uh, man. It's like, I think it's somewhat hard to recommend them, but like ah. Hjarnan, Hjarnan, for example, even when they win, puts up barely over 21 points a game. So Vitaly, unfortunately, just doesn't have that many high kill players, really. Unless someone just gives Nuke Duck Gangplank for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, maybe maybe you go after Cabochard, but even then he's only twenty one points. So Vitality is one of those teams that like just doesn't get that many fantasy points, unfortunately. So it's hard to it's hard to actually recommend them because they're one of those teams that could definitely win, but they don't have any outstanding players. Not like Sven, who's getting thirty points a game. There's nobody close on Vitality to those kind of numbers. So, okay, an interesting matchup is Unicorns of Love Fnatic, not least because it was all, there were already similar positions in the table. Unicorns of Love have been impressive even without Diamond Prox, but more importantly because Fnatic now has just changed the support player to this guy who has, like, a totally unpronounceable name, the Swedish guy, like, clack back or some shit. I don't know. I don't even pay attention to that stuff, Monty. But So now they've got this all Swedish bot lane, and I heard that Reckless is the shot caller now. So... Does Unicorns of Love upset Fnatic in this match? I don't know if it's even an upset anymore because Unicorns of Love actually have been doing pretty well this season, and I think that they're they've kind of really put it together. They they've like they've actually done quite well so far, and their shot calling has been pretty clean. And Steelback has really shown up surprisingly. Uh, this could be, of course, the the revenge of Steelback. Um, he actually has a very large number of points per points per win, so yeah, yeah. he's actually a very good player to pick up uh, on fantasy. And so is Fox. Both of those guys are hovering in the twenty-seven to twenty-eight points on, in a victory. So they they're a team that's been making a lot of waves in in fantasy. I mean, even in the jungle position, they're a little bit above average. So this is a good team to go after. Vizcachi's about twenty-five, which is pretty good for a top laner. So yeah, the, the, if you think Unicorns of Love are going to win, uh, Steelback, who's not that expensive, he's only 7,500 or 7,900, definitely a good choice. Uh, Fox is 8,000, so they're not the most expensive at their positions, but they are very, very good when it comes to, to fantasy. And just to make a, a general note of, like, of context, the thing that makes Steelback quite good value here as well is that... Okay, so for example, Emperor is above him, Forgiven's above him, but those two teams are playing each other, and that's a very hard matchup to know who will win. So Steelback might actually be a more reliable pick here because he's cheaper. Yes, totally agree. And uh, Steelback actually does, when they win, put up more points than Emperor. So there's that aspect of, of it too, is that just on average so far, Steelback has done better in victory than Emperor has for fantasy statistics. Uh, same thing actually is better than Forgiven too. Uh, it's him and Sven that are very highly, and Mr. Rall is actually, weirdly enough, on Elements, who put up the big, big points in, in wins as 80 carries. Well, in the case of Elements, it's because they don't win very often. But okay, so the, the marquee game of the week is H2K versus G2, the two best teams in the league. Now, who do you actually think wins this match? Because as far as we know, it's going to be Selfie still for H2K, but actually that hasn't mattered. They've still looked pretty good, even with Selfie in. Yeah, I don't know who's going to win this one. I think this is going to be really close. Uh, this one's this one's definitely tough to call. Uh, I think Trick is kind of your go-to guy here if you think G2 is going to win, just because for his position, 
he gets a lot of fantasy points, and so does Perks. Perks is actually one of the highest players in the league for fantasy, so that's that's pretty good. From on the H two K side, gets a little murkier, a uh, little bit harder harder to call. Forgiven is about twenty four, but usually H two K's games have been pretty quick and pretty clean, so they haven't been at the top when it comes to when it comes to fantasy points. Like Ryu is not great. They're pretty much across the board below everybody on G two. So I don't know if I I don't know if I would select players. First off, they're really expensive, and second off, I think there's better value in like the unicorns of love guys. I do actually think that this is a game where I'm I'm actually concerned that I think H two K might lose the game actually because when I saw G two lose that game to Vitality, it seemed like one of the keys that you clearly need to be able to beat the G2 guys that a lot a lot of teams have is you first of all you have to have a mid lane who's a really good laner not many people have been able to actually lane against Bugs because he just like harasses them so much he doesn't yep. it's not even like he just gets mad CS he, he has CS leads but it's not like he gets like the crazy number you know he just is so good at harassing and he's got solo kills so the difference was Nuketuk was on a, a fantastic champion for Nuketuk and Nuketuk played very well in that match I don't know that this is where I'm worried that Salfie won't have that much of an impact you know I think that's very true so maybe you take G2 here just because of the strength of their mid lane. And in that case, like Perks is huge, huge point getter. If you want to take him, that is definitely a good a good choice. Because obviously the problem for this matchup is the players are so expensive, you have to guess right as to who wins the game, basically. Yeah, Perks and Trick are the ones you want, though, if you think G2 is going to win, which they certainly have a good chance of doing. So Rocker is only 1-8 to eight and are playing elements who amazingly have actually won some games. Is Rockat shit? That's the first question. Well, I think it's hard to lose some of your players to the great Visa sure. crisis. Um, and I think that just from a fantasy point perspective, this game is actually probably really worth picking up players from because the Elements guys put together a shit ton of points. We talked about Mr. Rollis, huge in wins, and I think uh, Elements is likely to win this. He gets over 30 points a game. Ika, their mid laner, gets nearly 30 points a game. So He's very cheap. Yeah, he's very cheap. Exactly. Spraddle gets 26 points a game, which is obviously, like, I mean, that's that's pretty good. So Just to reiterate, guys, so in fantasy sports, you actually pick Promise Q, and he can win you money. <laughs> See? Win another world well, here, guys. <laughs> well, Spraddle is, you know, their support player. He, he puts up 26, over 26 points a game as a support player. So he's also $6,800. So he's super cheap. And this is actually probably some really good deals on elements if they beat if they beat Rockat, which they're favored to do, because they're both cheap and likely to win, and have players who are up towards the top in points per per victory. So all those guys are great, great pickups for fantasy. And then the last game of the day, is in. If you ever wanted a shit show, mate, here you go. So Giants is playing Splice. Now, the problem is, do any of these players get fantasy points? Because obviously this match could be terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, the answer to that is yes. If Splice wins, Semcux is actually number one in Europe when, in points and victory at over 36. Okay. So, yeah, that's, that's Not definitely... Not bad gamble then, 7,500? No. Yeah, take him. He's probably the best one. So of these matchups, it sounds like uh, Unicorns of Love Fnatic as the game, and then maybe some players from Elements is what you're thinking for making a team here. Yeah, I think those are those are both pretty good selections for the for this day. And perks, of course, perks and trick, since uh, H2K it seems like they're still going to be in the visa bind. So the tricky part is which team do you pick? Because a lot of these, there's a lot of parity across these I'm, matches. It feels like Elements probably because. They've been. I don't think they're going to close efficiently. Okay. They'll close less efficiently than like Unicorns of Love, for instance. Right. Let's move over to NALCS. You know what's funny is when we did by the numbers for CS:GO, there was an episode where Richard was in like a hotel room in LA, and he had just his laptop like speakers on or something, and then he had to get a call during the show, right? And then when the guy 
like when he's talking to the guy, like picked it up. I just like leaned into the mic and I was like, but the Lewis, but the Lewis, I got the drugs you want. And he had to just like, because <laughs> who knows what was on that phone? That's the best part, Monty. It's funny. It's a funny story from my perspective. But for all we know, that was like some head guy at some fucking like media corp or something. I hey, I think I think that's actually the smallest PR problem that you would have with Richard Lewis out Probably, there. Just saying. Right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> so it's not even the worst thing we've done. That's the thing. It's, it's, low, it's, it's minor blip on the radar, right? Especially since it's not nearly as public as other other incidents that may or may not have got him have gotten him banned from Dreampack forever. So, so in NALCS, we have obviously a whole bunch of shit because that hasn't even started yet. So, the first matchup is. Echo Fox versus Renegades, and obviously Renegades has a new player. So what do you think the impact of the new player is? Well, I mean, we saw it last week, for example, like Renegades nearly beat TSM. Uh, so, but I'll, obviously... I'll just correct you there. I'm, I think you mean Freeze nearly beat TSM. <laughs> Unfortunately, it turns out one man can't do it all, though. I mean, so. Flair's, Flair's solo killed Hauntzer in lane and was like 3-0 and in 20 minutes. So, no, actually, as a team... That, that's actually Hauntzer, though, so it doesn't count. But it was... Okay, Freeze almost did win that game, I agree. <laughs> Freeze is very good. By the way, here's, here's an example of what haters are like, Monty. You know, there was people on Reddit who were actually like, he wasn't even that good. Like, you know, Draven's a counter to... Callista, like, yeah, because everyone in the fucking world plays Draven, don't they? I mean, everyone plays Callista, mate. So where's all these counters coming out? Where are the fucking Koreans? Like, oh, did he get Callista? Put me on Draven, coach. Like, no one. No one in the fucking world plays that champion. Like, people need to just sit the fuck down already. They just go too ham, mate. Well, the other thing about Draven is that nobody practices him because he's very difficult mechanically. Yeah. So it, it is like a weird pocket pick, and it does actually do well against Callista. So, like, that's. But not everybody can play it, right? And no one, no one's going to practice Draven for a specific matchup. That's just like a weird freeze thing, right? Yeah, dude. There's an interview. It was last year that someone did with him, and they asked him. It was that AMA he did with all those fans, and someone asked him why he doesn't play Draven, and he said it's too mechanically difficult. Yeah, that's him. He's fucking one of the best players <laughs> in the world. And the whole point of that, by the way, isn't as bad mechanics. It's just that that one particular champion, he probably just never had the knack for it. You know, it's a very specific type you have to play. Right. And you have to practice it a whole bunch for like no reason, right? Because it's high risk. It's high risk, high reward. Here's the thing about that champion. This is one of the things that I do appreciate about Freeze, right? It's because every except for when he gets in these scenarios when his teams are losing and his confidence gets beaten down, he's a mega cocky guy, right? So I once said to him, like, "Come on, Freeze, you got to stop playing Draven." Because think about it. One of the reasons why no one plays it as well, mate, is because everyone knows where you have to walk to next to get the fucking axe so they can just aim shit. And he goes, "Yes, but I know that as well." And I was like, oh, Jedi, you know. Don't say that as though you're mind gaming people like a fucking Jedi, but they're gonna aim some at where you're gonna go to. You're not gonna I got it's like just the way he tried to say it, like he was all cool. I was like, fuck you, mate. I like, not trying to go like to the next level with this shit. But, but I can't lie, when he does play it really well, it does make me think like maybe he was being serious. Like I, you know, I'm not sure if he's mind gaming me or whether it's real. That's my problem. So in this game, is Freeze a good pickup? I mean, there's obviously a potential win yes. for Renegades. Yes. Okay, so Freeze, now Renegades, only has one win, so it's a small sample size. But out of all the players in Europe, North America, and Korea, Freeze has the highest number of points in a win at over 50, which is like 15 higher than anyone, including Senkux, uh, in EU. So I think if Renegades win, this is like, Freeze could be a super, super good pickup. And as far as we know, like you mentioned on the last episode, Echo Fox probably shouldn't have their Visa players yet. I think they may have them this week. So okay. we may see Froggen and KFO this week. But even that could be a bad thing for them because they haven't played with the lineup in theory in official LCS games in a while. So just switching back could be a transition. Aspect. You also have to leave America to get your P1 Visa. So I don't know if they went to Canada or something like that, but they may have not have even had great practice this week with the rest of their team. Because you have to go through visa interviews in a country outside of America. So, I don't know what kind of shape they're going to be in. It, since you said that Renegades haven't been very good at closing, is this a potential shit show match? Uh, yes. I think that's been a major problem. It could be a very long game, just like the TSM one. I mean, the, the proof is there. Last week, I mean, Renegades had a 5,000 gold lead at 20 minutes on TSM and still managed to lose the game through throwing, so it's, 
it's I, I think this is a very good game for for fantasy points. So NNG versus CLG on paper in the real world is a is a great matchup. This could be quite interesting. The problem is, in general, aren't the NIG players not that great for stats usually? Um, yeah, let me, let me take a look at that. Get a little bit more in depth on it. Um, so Alltech usually has been pretty good, I have to say. Uh, he's been at like 32 plus points a game in victory, so Alltech actually is <coughs> a pretty compelling pickup. Uh, GBM has been over 31 points in victory, so he's going to be another one that should he's be... He's quite pretty... cheap, actually. He's 7,800. Yeah. Actually, the biggest player in wins has been Impact, so at over 35 points a game. So Impact could be a very good pickup here. One so actually, they, they put up points. actually quite a few points, for sure. Okay. Who will actually win that game? Energy? I think Energy will win that game, but CLG has been playing pretty well recently, so that's... It's not a open and open and shut case. If you think CLG is going to win, uh, Huhi has been doing really well. Huhi and Stixay have been way up there when it comes to points for for CLG. Uh, Cloud Nine against Liquid. Now Cloud Nine looks like they improved week on week. Liquid, for all the hype around them, it feels like that's died off a bit to me. Like it feels like they are just going to be middle of the pack at best. If not, well, I don't know. They've been doing better, but the thing about Liquid is that they put up insane fantasy points because their games like tend to stretch on. But Dardock is actually the highest point total player on their team at the moment uh, from the jungle position, so he's been doing really well. And he's up at like thirty-one points. He's higher than Piglet. He's higher than Phoenix. So there's like an extremely good value for you if you think that. Team Liquid's going to win. Now it's super expensive, but definitely uh, the point. Do you there. think is how reasonable is the gamble though, to win against Cloud Nine? I don't know because both of the teams have been on the rise a little bit. I think that Cloud Nine has been looking better and better, and so is Team Liquid. So it's I think it's hard to tell. I would just hand it to Cloud. I I think Cloud Nine will win due to better shot calling. Uh, but if Team Liquid win, then Dardock Piglet, those are going to get you a lot of points. Okay, tip against TSM. I mean, here's the mad thing about just the LCS right now. If you looked at these two rosters, it should be impossible for Tip to win this game. But Tip has won a bunch of games this season. Can they upset TSM? Yeah, I think TSM has really like lucked out in a lot of their games. They've relied on like throws in order to win, not through proactive, I would say, action on their own. They haven't actually been looking that great. So yeah, there is a possibility that, that Tip can come in here and, and take a win. Oh, by the way, j just for anyone who's watching, just to clarify, it does say RF Legendary on the Alpha Draft site, but it is Flares who's playing instead. Yes, it's Flares playing this week. Okay. So who who won tip if you were going to gamble here? Who would you pick? Uh, Proxen. Weirdly enough, it's another situation where the jungler actually has, on average, acquired the most points and wins. So He's actually would... the cheapest player in, the, in all of the jungle position. I mean, it's not bad. If you think they're going to upset, gets you 26 points per game right there. So he's definitely somebody to, to take a look at. Gates' numbers have been, you know, put down a little bit by the fact that he's been playing like a bunch of all these, you know, a bunch of different positions. Okay, so Immortals versus Dignitas. Now, with how it's gone so far, doesn't feel like Dignitas is the team to take Immortals down. No. Um, and Immortals, you know, they do they do pretty well in terms of points. Obviously, Wild Turtle is way up there, but he's still under 30. So I think there's better value you can get there because this game is likely to, I think, go pretty quickly and therefore not stretch out and get a ton of points for for the winner. But I suppose it's it's definitely possible that it could go for, for longer, but I just doubt it. I think this will be done and dusted pretty quickly. Uh, Huni is not actually a great pick. Rainover is pretty good, uh, but it's really Wild Turtle is the one you would you would want to pick from here. So on day one, it feels like to summarize, right? The ones we think are like solid wins would be like Energy, Immortal. If you want to go crazy and you want to try and win the whole contest with upsets, just make a team out of Liquid and Tip. You might just <laughs> yeah. wreck the whole thing. Yes, if you get the two would, upsets. Yeah, if you get the two upsets, you will win. <laughs> Like the, those like guys that, put up a ton of That points. would be the one if you were going to do like one of those big contests where you need to yeah, be in the top 10 or something. If you, And Renegades, Echo Fox is not a bad one just for it might be a ridiculously long game or a terrible game. Yeah. 
So day two starts off with energy Echo Fox. Now the question is, if energy stomped this game, is there a problem that it could be too clean? There's just like not enough kills? Oh, I'm trying to see if there are contests available for day two yet, so I can look at salaries, but there are not. It's only for day one. So let me flip over so I can take a look at them. So day two is going to be but energy Echo Fox. I mean, same same thing applies. Like all tech GBM here, these are going to be the go-to guys. Again, Impact is the highest point total player on that team. Should be an easy win for Energy. I think that Impact would be definitely a player to pick up. Okay, and so CLG TSM. I think CLG will win this again. Uh, TSM, unless they've improved massively in the last week, has been looking really shaky. And I think this is a good matchup for CLG because CLG actually does have good shot calling. Uh, in their games, and that's what TSM has been lacking, and TSM has relied mostly, like I said, on throws to get back into a lot of these games, so I think CLG has a, comes out with a pretty strong advantage. Okay, Immortals Cloud9. Now, the hype on this game has been that since Immortals has beaten everyone, well, the one way you can say they haven't beaten everyone is they technically haven't been Cloud9 with High in the game, so if High plays, maybe this is the kick. Can this actually work? Well, and they've been looking better. That That's the thing about Cloud9. It's hard to know until we actually see the game on the previous day, but even if Cloud9 wins, their their points are not awesome. In fact, Balls, in terms of points while winning, is horrible. He's only at like 15.95 points in a victory. He's one of the lowest players actually in any league for fantasy points, so don't pick him. I mean, he is a diamond two player. You know, you've got to give this guy give him a break, you know. <laughs> He's called up from the minors. He's playing in the big leagues. He's doing his best, I mean, you know. That's, that's actually appalling, 15.95 points in a win. So uh, maybe you take Sneaky or Jensen here. Those guys have been doing okay, but do not, do not, take, do not take balls. <laughs> Don't take high either. So based on what you said on day one, depending obviously on the pricing, liquid players must be good value against Renegades. Yeah. I, especially like guys like Dardock and Piglet, and because remember the first both Renegades and Liquid have had shot calling problems, and the first game between these teams that Renegades won went over an uh, like I think it went over an hour. So there are a lot of points to be had in that game. I think I don't think it's going to be a quick and efficient closure. Even picking the losing side of that is likely to get you some pretty decent points. And so likewise, Dig versus Tip that could potentially be a good fantasy game. Yeah, it could. And if you think Dig is going to win. Uh, that's let's see what they what we got there. Uh, Shifter has actually been putting up a lot of points in Dig victories, like nearly thirty four. So he's going to be good if you think Dignitas is going to pull that one out. He even solo kills people sometimes. You know, I know how this one. I want to know what happened to him in the offseason. <laughs> Did he get brainwashed? Did he bump his head or something like in a comedy? Been playing movie a lot of America? assassins. You know, he's he's definitely yeah. been doing a lot better. It's uh, it's impressive. So, okay, what is the best game of the second day, do you think? Liquid Renegades, probably, for fantasy reasons. And is there a lock for this day? Like, is Immortals still the lock in as much as they've won so many? Ooh, I think Energy over Echo Fox is probably more of a lock. Okay. Right, those are the matches for this week, then. So, okay, I'll, I'll tell you a question I never normally ask you. So if someone had to pick between the two for whatever reason, they could go with, they could do EULCS or they could do NALCS. If they wanted to pick between the two, which do you think is the better value for this week? Uh, I think NA is probably better for this week just because you have some more clear winners. Oh, I don't know. Those Elements dudes are so cheap in EU, though. That's, That's like the steal. That's the value, I, right? I, Yeah, I think the Elements value in that Rocket match is really crazy. So there's that. But as, a, as a general trend, is it actually known which league generates more fantasy points? Like, do, it, it, does EU have more NA, kills? NA, does NA, NA does. I can tell you from looking at looking at the numbers themselves that NA definitely has more points. It's sloppy. Do you know, is there a reason why that? Is it just because it's, it's all over the place in the games? Long, long games, more kills, more points, not as efficient closures. For the most part, EU has had shorter, on average, game times this season. So. I mean, the problem, obviously, is think of one of the best teams in Europe, H2K, are the ones where they won an entire game off one team fight. So yep. that's, that's terrible for fantasy. <laughs> that's brilliant it's if you're the coach. You're like, great job, but that's terrible for fantasy <laughs> points. 
Okay. So, again, guys, counterintuitive, NALCS, actually better than the ULCS <laughs> in fantasy on Alpha Draft. So if you are a true American patriot, support America by playing on Alpha Draft in the NALCS. So that's pretty much the end of this episode. If uh, you want to play Alpha Draft, do so. I'd, it'd be kind of weird if you watched the whole show, but you're actually like, I don't really have any interest in our fantasy sports, actually. <laughs> it would be kind of strange, so I would suggest you play there. Or if you watch the whole episode, then go to a rival service and, and play there, if indeed rival services still exist. Some of them are full of criminals, from what I've heard, but allegedly, I didn't actually say their names anyway, so I didn't get in trouble there, allegedly. And I also don't know how the law works, so I just like, for example, I made a video where I was wrecking riot on the visa thing, so I just kept saying the word allegedly over and over again, but I don't know what the actual legal precedent is, like when you meant to say it. So I just kept saying, perhaps, supposedly, and allegedly, while then saying, I think they're actually criminals, like, and this person is scum, so allegedly but I, i'm not even sure if you meant to say it before if that's like a disclaimer even but i'll keep doing it anyway no one's ever going to take me to court monty well actually maybe that's how you'll know if he's but here's the guy guys if i ever get taken to court over some shit i say on a show or twitter then esports is mainstream right now there's no there's no worry about it at all so that's the marker right there use that as the benchmark for when esports hits the mainstream so if you want to play fancy esports i would recommend you do it by the numbers <laughs>